Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Gurjars. Going purely by online win rate, Gurjars have been either the best or second best open map civilization for most of 2022, though they have been recently nerfed in a couple of ways. Since then, with an admittedly small sample size, they fall into a more balanced 9th on open maps and 13th on closed maps out of 42 civilizations. While they're still clearly a very strong civilization, I personally find them to be also quite interesting to play, in part for their strange early game bonuses, which we'll look at in depth, but also for their three unique units. Likely because of those factors and complexity, they've always performed progressively better at higher elo ratings than for casual players, as they can be a little tricky to learn at first. Hopefully this overview will help with that process though, so let's check them out. To start off with their team bonus, their allies and Gajars themselves have their camels and elephants created 25% faster. Of the two, I would say camels are the big one here, as Gajars are missing the night line entirely. While they don't have access to the battle elephant, as a team bonus you still have 6 different ally sieves that could benefit from that, on top of any others that use elephant archers or camels. Even just as a bonus in 1v1 games, it's pretty solid given camels are often a big part of a Gajars core army. It allows them to be trained significantly faster than a knight, which takes 30 seconds for a generic civilization in comparison. Their next two bonuses come as a pair and are worth spending a bit of time on. Not only do you start with two forge bushes under your town center, but you can also garrison mills with herdables to produce a passive trickle of food. This is probably the trickiest part of picking up the civilization for the first time, but if you handle it right and know the steps to follow, this bonus can give you a very nice lead heading into Feudal Age. To give you a sense of the numbers, with all 8 sheep garrisoned, the mill generates between 200 and 250 food in a typical Feudal Age advance time, adding up to around 500 food by 21 or 22 minutes, and returns all 800 food by 34 minutes. The way Gurjars are typically played by experienced players is with a very early mill right after your first two houses are up, and then putting all sheep into the mill as soon as possible. Because berries collect so slowly and you want to keep up villager production constantly, you'll then want to lure a boar or start pushing deer a bit earlier than usual. Remember, as long as you're bringing in enough food to keep your villagers busy, you're essentially playing up one villager in Dark Age, thanks to the passive food income. Unfortunately, building an early mill means that you're out of wood to afford a lumber camp, so the first wood villagers go on straggler trees, then build a lumber camp after your third house. You can see why high level players typically do better with Gajars than casual players, especially if they get them on random, as it's a lot of little things to manage, including deer pushing to make things run more smoothly. Eventually you are going to run out of free food sources though, and at that point you have to make the call between ungarrisoning sheep a couple at a time or putting down some early farms. There's an argument for both sides here, and ungarrisoning sheep means you can usually delay making any farms until after horse collar, which is nice from a wood savings point of view, though from what I've seen, generally high level players just leave them garrisoned for the passive trickle and make the early farms as needed. One word of caution is if you are leaving the sheep in, be careful of men at arms or other units destroying your mill, especially if it's in an exposed position. All in all though, for Gajars, the slightly more complicated start does seem to compensate players, and adds a bit of variety for anyone who's maybe bored of the standard Dark Age. Their next bonus is their mounted units deal a staggered amount of extra bonus damage. Maybe surprisingly, the Elephant Archer has no bonus damage whatsoever, meaning we can just ignore that unit, and you also don't have Cavalry Archers, so this doesn't actually help at the archery range at all. At the stable though, this gives some extra help for the Scout Cavalry line against Monks as one side effect. In Castle Age, there's no practical impact against monks at full health, but it can be situationally helpful on Arena with the right combination of blacksmith and monk upgrades. The main benefit though is for camels, especially against other mounted units. The extra 30% bonus damage means they actually take out knights in 8 instead of the typical 10 attacks for most camels. Like Hindustanis, this means Gurjars aren't just beating knights cost effectively, but even with population efficiency with equal numbers in Castle Age. Once you reach Imperial Age as well, the bonus increases to plus 40%, leading to another plus 1 attack against Cavalry. 
Another less obvious benefit is for the Armored Elephant, which is the Indian Civilization's replacement for the Battering Ram. It counts as a mounted unit, despite not having a rider, meaning its bonus damage against buildings is increased 30% in Castle Age. Given almost all of its damage is from anti-building bonuses, that ends up meaning that they do almost as much as a Siege Ram, but available 1 H earlier. If that's not enough, the Imperial Age upgrade to Siege Elephant effectively gives you another plus 40% damage, meaning they more than match a fully upgraded ram with Siege Engineers, despite not having that technology. This is on top of Armored and Siege Elephants being faster than rams and having a bit more combat ability against villagers. So overall with this bonus, it's a surprisingly potent weapon for Gajars especially. Their final bonus is for water maps, and is that they can garrison docks with up to 10 fishing ships. Obviously, this is useful to save them during raids, though note it doesn't work on fishermen or any other naval unit. This bonus doesn't seem to do a lot in practice, as the Qajar's win rate on water maps is actually below average, but situationally, this could help you out in a pinch. So that's their Civ bonuses, and so far, you might feel pushed toward camels with faster creation and more bonus damage, though with the added unusual start to navigate when it comes to their economy. Now let's move on and take a look at their not one, not two, but record-setting three unique units. The first is the Chakron Thrower from the castle. This is a ranged melee unit, similar to the Gabetto in Throwing Axemen, though side by side, notice they have much lower attack than those two in Castle Age, which becomes even more noticeable in Imperial Age, ending with just four base attack, though that can be improved to six with Blacksmith Tax. What's more is their cost compared to these other units isn't particularly cheap, so at first they might seem a bit underpowered. That is, until you consider their special ability to deal full damage to anything their attack passes through. Even if it is just 2 or 3 damage getting through their target's melee armor, that adds up fast in large groups. They're of course upgraded by anything infantry related, including infantry attack and arson, which are both a good idea to pick up, and they also have a unique tech to reduce their food cost as well. In terms of how to actually use them, they're decent but not necessarily cost effective against archers in a fair fight, and they're also outranged by 2 in that matchup. While that's a bit of a dubious situation, they are very good against skirmishers though, as Chakram are ranged infantry and not archers, so they don't take bonus damage from skirmishers, and likewise have a melee attack that bypasses their high pierce armor. Their main specialty though is infantry, which they have a plus one attack bonus against, and who generally have low melee armor, though of course there's exceptions. Having access to an anti-infantry specialist is quite useful considering Gurjar's stable units are otherwise weak against mass pikemen. Where this unit is very much focused on being anti-infantry though, their second unique unit complements it by being specialized as anti-archer, and that's the Shravamsha Rider from the stable. Again, comparing their stats and costs side by side with Light Cavalry and the Knight, they don't immediately jump out as looking particularly special. In fact, they're quite comparable to the Light Cavalry's stats while having an extra gold cost thrown in. One hidden advantage they have in their favor is they're actually the fastest out of this group, which immediately implies they're going to be pretty good at raiding. Of course, anyone familiar with the unit knows their main advantage is their regenerating Halo-style shield against projectiles, for lack of a better description. Here, you can see them against a single crossbow, where despite having quite poor stats on paper, they end up with the same resilience as a knight, since a lot of the early attacks are completely negated. The shield can also regenerate mid-battle, so it even helps in prolonged fights. In other cases, the dodge shield mechanic can be even more dramatic, like against a mangonel shot, where the entire first hit is completely absorbed. The only way to beat them easily is either with melee units or with large amount of focus firing to essentially overwhelm the shield. Generally, unless they're massively outnumbered, they're a great choice against crossbows, even handling town center fire as well, though they are beaten by knights and most melee units cost effectively, since remember its base stats are quite poor. Their most common use is against either archer civilizations or mangonels, and they make for a great pairing with camels, whose low pierce armor makes them otherwise vulnerable to even generic crossbows. Now so far we have a unique unit to deal with infantry, another for archers, which leaves the third unique unit as your response to cavalry in the form of the camel line with the unique camel scout. This is the Gurjar's replacement for the scout cavalry and has a few advantages and disadvantages. Initially, they have no bonus damage in Dark Age against Cavalry, and in terms of scouting, it's basically just a reskin of the normal scout, with the same speed and line of sight. With that said, the way the numbers work out with their attack and higher HP, they're in fact guaranteed to win a one-on-one -on -one fight against the Scout Cavalry, with one HP left, even if the scout attacks first. Following that, in Feudal Age, they gain an automatic plus six hidden attack bonus against Cavalry, though with the trade-off of being slower than the typical scout. 
Remember, they cost the regular camels 55 food and 60 gold, compared to the scout cavalry's 80 food. So overall, it is a big investment in feudal. Of course, any you manage to create in Feudal Age or on the way up to Castle Age automatically upgrade to Camels once you reach Castle Age, giving them more HP, attack, and a big drop in training time to just 18 seconds. So that's their three unique units, which together really seem to handle just about every type of unit you can come across on land maps. Now let's move on and check out their unique techs. The first is pretty straightforward and gives a food discount on all of your military units. This is useful for camels, hazars, elephant archers, Trevampshire riders, chakrams, and even armored elephants, which cost food. So there's really no shortage of uses for this tech, and it's also reasonably cheap. In contrast, their Imperial Age unique tech is a bit more situational and gives camel riders and elephant archers plus four melee armor, which on the surface does synergize with your faster creation team bonus. Keep in mind that neither has melee armor by default, so this actually adds more melee armor than all of the blacksmith armor upgrades combined. That said, it doesn't really help a lot against Halberdiers, for example, as bonus damage ignores armor completely, and even against Champions, it basically only makes up for your lack of Blast Furnace. Instead, I see this being most useful against the Paladin, where the plus 40% bonus damage comes into play, and having both effects stacking really makes him quite a strong counter to that unit. It's the same idea for the Elephant Archer, where against Halberdiers, it's just a drop in the bucket, but against more general melee units, it's more than doubling their usual armor. Given the tech's high cost, and the fact it doesn't help at all against anything doing pierce damage, I see this as being more situational for when you're making a lot of camels against cavalry or other melee units. So that's the unique units and techs, which is really where a lot of the Gajar's strength lies. As we've seen, they pretty much have a specialist counter unit for just about any situation, though to get a full view of their options, let's take a quick look at the tech tree, starting with the archers. Here, they're missing Arbalester, the final armor upgrade, and have elephant archers instead of cavalry archers. Basically, you're fine in Feudal and Castle Age, even getting fully upgraded crossbows, though things fall off quite a bit in Imperial, except for the Elephant Archer. You do pick up the Hand Cannoneer, but I see the Archie range as really a secondary focus, mainly just to provide support units or counters. Overall, I'd say it's a B- for their Archers. Next up for Infantry, it's not a great look. They're missing Champion, Pikemen, Squires, and Blast Furnace, which altogether is pretty brutal. Opening men-at-arms would be completely fine, but after that, it's basically all downhill into quite possibly the worst barracks options of any civilization, as you're really pushed toward using camels over the spear line. I suppose situationally against pure eagle warriors, you might go two-handed swordsmen, but I have to give the barracks here an F, and if you're making a lot of barracks as Gajars, it feels like you're probably in a difficult position. If we factor in the Chakram Thrower as an infantry unit though, you can maybe argue that brings things up to a B, as it's widely considered a pretty strong unit in the right situation, especially against pikes and skirmishers. Moving on to cavalry, initially things don't look very good, with no nightline or blast furnace. Of course, the extra mounted attack bonus and creation speed bonus make your camel riders top tier, and their Hazar spam is pretty amazing, with 25% reduced cost after their Castle Age unique tech. They can also pull off a pretty decent scout rush as a combination of the extra forage bushes and their mill bonus. Personally, I think the Shravampshire Rider is their biggest weapon though, as they do so well against archers, defenses, and even mangonels. It's hard to compare Gajars to other stables as they're so unique, but I'd say it's an A for me, even with the missing attack upgrade and lack of the nightline. Next up for Siege, of course the Armored Elephant replaces the Ramline, and does significantly more damage to buildings than it probably should thanks to a Civ bonus. They are missing Siege Onager and Siege Engineers, but Bombard Cannon is a nice option to counter enemy Onagers. You could even argue Heavy Scorpion probably isn't needed on account of having the Chakram Thrower, so I think while you are held back by missing Siege Engineers on their Onagers, I'd consider them a solid A-, with some pretty scary potential in Castle Age to raise buildings surprisingly quickly with their Elephants. Next up for the Navy, they get out to a nice start with their extra forage bushes and passive food income, and they also have their Docks' ability to protect their fishing ships. While their online performance on maps like Islands hasn't been great, I think they have some decent potential, worth at least a B in the early game. In the late game though, they're missing out on Fast Fire Ship and Dry Dock, without an obvious bonus helping them out, though they at least have Galleons with Bracer. At this point, it falls to a C plus for me, for an overall B- on the water. Taking a quick look now at Monks, overall they have some good options, just missing Block Printing, though with no direct Monk bonuses. I could definitely see a situational Monk Siege push with their early good economy on Arena, but admittedly it's not really their specialty. Access to block printing is also pretty important against Onagers as well, so I'd say it's a serviceable B for the Monastery. 
Moving on to defenses, they have lots of the core university techs, as well as very good counter units against both cavalry and archers, which I think contributes a bit to this category. I don't really think of them as a tower civilization, but I'd still say they're a B plus for defenses, with the caveat that your mill is a pretty easy target in the early game, and I've definitely seen that bonus backfire in the past. Wrapping up with their trash units, that is, units that don't cost any gold, they're missing quite a few techs here, most notably pikemen, which in the late game is a pretty glaring gap. Of course, both your Hazar and your Skirmishers are not fully upgraded, but I still think it's a B, basically carried on the back of cheaper Hazar. So to put it all together, admittedly they have a bit of an unusual start that can take a little bit of practice to get a handle on. Assuming you're able to take advantage of your passive income though, they have a great scout rush with the option of playing for an early archery range as well, or even going for a completely unique camel scout rush. I'd argue though it's in Castle Age where they really blossom, with their great camels to deal with knights, the Shravamsha Rider against crossbows, or chakram throwers against mass pikemen. All three upgrade nicely in Imperial Age, and of course they can also close out games with their discounted Hazar spam or very powerful Siege Elephant. There really isn't a moment where they feel weak or behind most civilizations, and they don't even really have a terrible matchup. Especially in team games, having a civilization like this able to counter both knights and crossbows so well makes them really hard to deal with, and as of the most recent data that I've seen, they actually had the best win rate on team game open maps. But speaking of powerful and flexible options, big thanks to this video's sponsor Squarespace. If you're an entrepreneur, blogger, or someone looking to build an online presence, but have no idea how to make a website from scratch, Squarespace has you covered with great tools to help you out and simplify the website building process. Using their templates, it's easy to have a functional website ready within minutes, which you can customize to your liking from there. Squarespace also have great third-party extensions to handle things like bookkeeping, taxes, shipping, and scheduling to accommodate your specific needs. You just pick a template and domain name, and you're good to go. The best part is if you use my code, you get two free weeks to try it out, and if you like it, you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So hopefully this video gave you a few ideas to try with the Gurjars, and how to handle this very unique civilization. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.